Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Elias Gorjagani. Um, I, am, I am an optometrist. I graduated from Illinois College of Optometry. And today I'm here to talk to you about vision and specifically how vision changes as you age. Inshallah, some of this will be uh, useful and beneficial to you. Okay, so tonight we'll be discussing a few common yet important eye conditions, including common vision changes and age-related eye conditions. I know this uh, seems like there's a lot of uh, terminology up there, but inshallah we'll get through it quite easily. So we can experience uh, vision changes at any age, even as children or as uh, young adults, but mostly at the age of uh, early 40s, um, most people will notice that they have significant changes at that time. So one of the most common vision changes that uh, people usually begin to notice in their early to mid 40s is that their arms aren't long enough. So you may find yourself trying to recite du'a at night and you're doing this a lot, trying to see what the, what's the Arabic reading on it. Or you might be at Cozy looking at the menu in the dim lighting trying to figure out what should I order and just say, maybe I'll just get the special today. But uh, these are just uh, some examples of a common condition named, uh, known as presbyopia. So this includes, so this is where the natural, um, this is where the eye is continuously growing. Um, usually what happens is as we're born, our eyes are continuously developing. By our, mid, uh, by our teenage years or mid-20s, uh, usually the eye itself has uh, already stopped growing, but the lens fibers are continuously still growing inside the eye. And then the density of these lens fibers is what causes that loss of the flexibility. And um, that's how we end up with this condition and we can't focus correctly. So most of the changes, uh, most of these changes can actually be corrected uh, by your doctor, um, usually either through uh, reading glasses or bifocals, trifocals, progressive lenses. These are the most common ways to correct for it. So as I mentioned before, it's usually it's noticeable um, in your early to mid 40s. And it's not a disease. It's not something that's prevented. Um, it's just normal aging changes. So let's take a moment to just discuss uh, some common visual conditions. Um, as many of you may have already heard about near, being nearsighted or farsighted, this is another common one. I hear numerous different names for it, stigma, stigmata, astig. There's, there's all kinds of names I hear from patients. It's actually called astigmatism. Um, this is a vision condition that causes blurred vision due to either the irregular shape of the cornea, which is the clear cover, the front part of the eye, or um, the curvature of the lens inside the eye. And what this results in is that the light rays that go inside the eye, so light, light rays going into the eye, usually don't focus properly on the retina, which is the back part of the eye here. And then that's why you notice that um, things may be out of focus and then it, it doesn't line up properly. Another common finding is uh, spots or floaters. You may notice um, just in any age that uh, there's something in your vision, you find like there's something floating through your vision. Uh, you might feel like it's a bug or um, like a fly, you just consistently can't get out of it. Um, that's just a normal uh, spot or floater. Uh, most cases, these are just uh, shadows of um, particles that are inside the fluid and the vitreous inside the eye itself. Um, although they can be more bothersome and irritating, it's nothing really to be worried about. Usually it doesn't cause any risk to the vision. Um, they're just a natural part of the eye's aging process. Um, keep in mind that if you do notice um, increase, sudden increase in floaters in your vision, or if, the, if you notice that there's uh, flashes of light, like lightning streaks in the corners of your vision, those are more, um, more uh, serious conditions and uh, signs of a retinal detachment. Those need to be seen immediately, so those are more serious. So now we'll turn our attention to some uh, age-related, uh, some more age-related eye diseases. And as you may already know, this is one of the most common ones. Uh, this is cataracts. Um, what happens is uh, the cells in the lens, they swell up and clou uh, cause cloudiness in the lens. This prevents the light reaching the retina, which is the back part of the eye, as we mentioned. Um, depending on the size and the location of it, it can interfere with normal vision. 
Usually it occurs in people who are aged uh, 55 or over, and it can occur in both eyes, although it may not necessarily be equal. It may be worse in one eye more than the other. Um, if we live long enough, we all end up with cataracts. Um, it's, just, it's just normal aging change. So inshallah, we all live that long. So just, uh, just some things uh, for treatment-wise in terms of cataracts. Um, sometimes uh, some temporary improvement can be uh, like a change in eyeglass prescription. Um, another can be just increasing the light they use when you're reading and uh, anti-glare coating. That can help with just glare at night. Um, like we said, it's just normal changes. Uh, when cataracts progress to the point where it starts affecting your daily vision and your day-to-day -day activities, that's usually when surgery may be indicated or needed. Um, cataract surgery simply just involves removing that lens, which is the natural lens inside the eye, and uh, just replacing it with an artificial lens. So another topic that may be interest to those of you who may have diabetes or know someone who has diabetes or even just family history of diabetes. Um, diabetic retinopathy is a condition that occurs in people who have diabetes and it causes progressive damage to the retina. Uh, diabetic retinopathy is a result of damage to the tiny blood vessels that are inside the eye um, that produce nourishment to the eye and the retina. Um, what happens is that these blood vessels, um, with the changes in them, they leak out blood and fluid, and that's what causes swelling of the, of the retina and cloudiness in the vision, and this usually affects both eyes. Uh, early stages can include blurry vision or even just no, no visual symptoms at all. Um, but as the disease progresses, the symptoms can include the cloudiness of the vision, blind spots, and uh, more floaters. So the longer a person has diabetes, the more they will likely develop diabetic retinopathy. And if it's left untreated, um, it can cause blindness. Once the damage has already occurred, the effects are usually permanent. So for those, for those who have diabetes, um, it can be controlled by taking prescribed medications, um, following up with your primary care doctor, and sticking to a uh, regular diet, a strict diet, exercising regularly, and reducing high blood pressure and avoiding smoking. So I can't stress the importance of uh, comprehensive and regular eye exams because this is really one of the most preventable eye diseases, but oftentimes it is overlooked. Another group of diseases is uh, glaucoma. It's, um, it's, lead, it's a group of eye disorders that leads to progressive damage to the optic nerve. So where diabetic retinopathy was uh, aff affecting the retina itself, glaucoma actually affects the optic nerve specifically. So the optic nerve is a bundle of about one million individual nerve fibers, and it transmits the, vis the visual signals from the eye to the brain. The most common form of glaucoma is just related to an increase in uh, eye pressure. And this pressure increase, it causes damage to the optic nerve and uh, loss of nerve fibers. And that's what in turn can cause uh, loss of vision as well. It's the second leading cause of blindness in the US. And people who have a uh, family history of glaucoma, um, thinner corneas or uh, eye inflammation using medications that increase the pressure, um, they are more, more prone to this as well. And uh, as you can see here, so glaucoma actually affects the side vision first, um, affects the vision from the outside, the peripheral vision first, and then uh, slowly, slowly moves inwards. So that's why a lot of times it's overlooked. Um, you might not notice your side vision slowly, slowly going until it starts getting more centrally. And then our final topic for this evening is macular degeneration. Um, it's another leading cause of blindness in America. It results from changes to the macula, which is a portion of the retina that is responsible for clear and sharp vision. It's a central part of the retina. Some common symptoms include uh, the gradual loss of ability to see objects clearly, um, distortion in your central vision, and uh, gradual loss of even color vision um, and a dark or empty appearance to the central vision. So like we noticed on the previous slide, um, 
where it affected the, uh, the peripheral vision with glaucoma. In macular degeneration, the central vision is most affected. So this one, people a lot of times will notice sooner rather than later, um, but it's another, it's another condition that needs to be uh, monitored and treated, uh, watched closely. So there are many important benefits to regular eye care. Um, because some eye diseases don't even show up any symptoms, you don't notice any of it until the vision can already be lost. Um, it's definitely important to make sure you are seeing uh, your eye doctor and following up with them. Um, the eye is the only place in, in the body where you can actually see blood vessels and you can see the uh, blood vessels directly through the eye. Um, that's why uh, conditions like the diabetes are picked up and can be picked up earlier as well. Um, so it's definitely important to go in for annual eye exams. Um, like I said, early detection is the key to preventing this irreversible vision loss. Um, after, after age 60, the American Optometric Association recommends adults to have comprehensive eye exams every year. Although it's important to have it every year and uh, have often regular comprehensive eye exams throughout your life, um, definitely more important even as we grow older. Um, for those of you who are considered at risk, so for example with um, history or family history of diabetes, uh, glaucoma, any of these other eye conditions um, definitely need to be monitored or seen more closely. Um, but like we said, uh, at the minimum, it should be every year. And uh, I hope uh, some of this information was beneficial to all of you. Um, if you have any questions, we can definitely ask right now as well. And if you have any other questions that you want to ask in private, feel free to approach me afterwards as well. Yes, Okay, so AMSLA grid is actually one of the, it's, it's a good way to check yourself as well. So, for example, if you've been diagnosed with macular degeneration or family history of it, that's a good way to just uh, essentially, actually, let me explain. AMSLA grid is just a, a grid. Essentially, it's just lines in a box um, where patients look at the center of the box itself. And they try to just notice if they can see the lines going up and down, left and right, notice the edges. Um, it's a good way to just, just quickly see if there's any distortion in the vision. Um, we usually give that out to patients who are more prone to macular degeneration. So that's a good way to keep track of it. Um, oftentimes you may have been told as well, just keep it on your fridge and just check it every day because that way you'll be more frequently noticing it. So if you do notice that, definitely go in to see your doctor um, because there may be something going on. Yes? So now glasses and contacts are both just ways to correct your vision. Um, in some conditions, some corneal conditions, contacts may be more indicated. Um, we didn't discuss any of that today, but sometimes uh, hard contacts are more indicated in that case. But a lot of times it's just cosmetic or patients want color contacts, things like that. Yep. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so now another another thing that can happen afterwards. So the NAION or optic neuropathy is a different condition. It's not related specifically to the cataracts, but sometimes uh, people going for cataract surgery have the implants done, the replacement for artificial lens, and then whether it's a few months later or a few years later, notice that there's some cloudiness on the lens itself. Sometimes when they go in to do the surgery, there are some cells that can be left behind on the back. So they have to be very careful not to damage or break through it, but sometimes that's why there are some cells that are left there and it just proliferates. And it essentially makes it look as if you have cataracts again. Um, that's not the case. You don't have cataracts. All they do is simply you go back in and they'll use just a laser just to clear up that portion. That's all they do. Um, in terms of? Usually that's because that's the only situation. Usually that proliferation of the cells is what's causing that cloudiness. There shouldn't usually be any cloudiness um, if the prescription and the measurements were done properly in the first place. But that may be something you just need to go back in and have them take a look. They'll dilate the eyes, 
um, to take another look at the back of the eye, and usually that's what they find. They just do um, just PCO. It's uh, they just do a quick laser through it, and it just clears it right up. Um, NI, NAI ON is more related to strokes or heart conditions, things like that. So definitely want to make sure you are following up with your primary care doctor as well for that. Um, we can. Okay. Okay. So. So cataracts, like we said, cataracts are throughout your life. It's continuously growing. Um, it's not something that just happens overnight. It's, it's continuously growing. Like even right now at this point, our eyes are still growing. The lenses, um, like we said, the lens fibers are continuously being added even though our eyes themselves have stopped growing. So it's over many, many, many years. It's not something that happens overnight. Um, what, just similarly how it affected presbyopia, it affects cataracts as well. So slowly, slowly, because it's such a gradual change, you don't notice it right away. Um, when the doctor sees you inside, so when we see you in the exam and we dilate the eyes, we take a look at the eye, that's when we notice that it's starting to, like early formation of the cataracts. Um, like we said, sometimes at the beginning, there's no, there's no need to do anything. It could just be an early stage of cataracts. So we'll just keep on watching it. We'll watch it until your day-to-day -day activities, your things are affected. So your vision is affected. We can't correct the vision with glasses anymore, things like that. That's when we'll go in and recommend the surgery. Um, if there's none of those symptoms, they won't recommend it right away because there's no need to treat it per se. Yep. Yes. I have a cataract in my eye. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it depends on the type of lens implant they did. Um, they have a couple of different implants nowadays and they're still coming up with newer and newer ones, depending on the type of correction you have as well. Um, the basic lenses they use effect, uh, just corrects for your distance vision. It doesn't do anything for up close. Um, the newer, vi uh, the newer um, premium lenses, as they call them, they still allow you to focus like you were able to do when you were younger. So you're now able to focus up close. They're still perfecting the technology. If it's something like that, it may just have shifted slightly. Um, but usually, it's, it's, um, it stays stable. It doesn't, doesn't have much symptoms after the fact. But like I said, there can, there can be other eye conditions going on. There's maybe other risk factors. So without knowing, I can't say for sure. No, unfortunately, it's not. Um, I do see a lot of patients who come in and say that I feel pressure in my eyes, things, things of that nature. Um, the eye pressure itself uh, usually ranges um, in like maybe the 15 to 20 range um, until it hits much higher, so 40 to 50 millimeters of mercury. You won't necessarily feel that pain in the eye, so you won't notice it right away. So that's why it is important to just um, make sure you are screened for it, uh, make sure you are checked for it as well. And that's, that's something different. So that wouldn't be related to necessarily to glaucoma. Of course, without, no, you can't tell for sure. So that's why when you, when you go in to have the eyes checked, um, we check the pressure. So they check the pressure usually at the beginning. Um, they also, once they dilate the eye, you can see the nerve. So like we said, um, glaucoma, it affects the pressure, it affects the nerve itself, the optic nerve. And then we look at the changes there as well. They might do some other tests, like a field test, for example, um, if they see that there's something that they suspect, they'll do some more testing on it as well. Yep. Yes. Unfortunately not. That's a common, that's a good question. And I get that a lot as well. Um, it's nothing that we can necessarily treat right away. Um, there's a longer procedure where they go in, they take out all the fluid inside the eye, and they replace it with just uh, essentially oil, um, synthetic. They take a look, they put that through it. But it's not it's not the best treatment. It's not something that we usually recommend unless there's a lot of floaters or there's a lot of buildup that's affecting the vision. Usually patients just get used to it. 
Um, it's kind of like you put on a new pair of shoes. You're just using, using, using until you get used to it. A lot of times by the second year, I'll see a patient come back in and they'll say they're already used to it. They don't notice it. I'll ask, did you notice you have a floater? They'll be like, no, I don't notice it at all. So it really just depends where it is as well. But most of the time, it's just something that we have to get used to it, unfortunately. Yes? So there are vision therapy techniques that are used, especially more with kids, um, with eye turns and other conditions. It does have its uses. There, there are vision therapy practices, although there's not as many. You'll notice them more at schools, um, hospitals, places like that. Um, there are some benefits to it. It just depends on what the condition is, what's going on. Yep. Yes? Okay. All right, thank you for your attention, and uh, inshallah, I hope you were able to benefit from it.